lahu mu'aqibatun for him meaning to allah belong mu'aqibat to him belong mu'aqibat meaning he sends them mu'aqibat is a plural of mu'aqiba ayn qaf ba aqib aqib is heal now when you're walking what do you do what do you do you step your foot and then you lift up the other right and you put your heel down and then you keep going ahead you keep walking forwards so mu'aqib is one who comes after the other in succession one after the other meaning in rotation so when you're walking one foot right foot left foot right foot left foot it doesn't stop it's successive you cannot walk with you know right foot and then you pick up the right foot again no it doesn't work like that it would be very awkward so it's in succession rotation one after the other so he sends muaqibat who are muaqibat angels that allah sends in succession to who to his servants to people where min bayni yadayhi in front of him wa min khalfihi and also behind him meaning angels that are present before a person and also behind a person think about it think about yourself angel in front of you angel behind you angel in front of you and behind you and this also means that angels that are in front meaning their one shift is leaving and from behind another shift is coming constantly a person is being watched and guarded by who by allah's angels yahfazunahu they guard him min amrillah at the command of allah because allah has commanded them to guard his servant now remember that the angels they guard us in two ways first of all they guard us as in they protect us and secondly they guard us as in they guard and preserve our deeds you know it's like once a companion he was praying salah and when he got up from rukur the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said sami'a allah liman hamida and what did that companion say rabbana lakal hamd hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi right so what happened so many angels they leap forward in order to catch those words they rushed in order to record those words first so when we say when we do our words our actions it's like the angels are catching them and recording them preserving them and they go and take them to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a person is sick then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his angels to that person why to witness that person his reaction his words and then allah asks his angels what did my servant say allah knows already what that person is saying in his pain and his sickness but allah sends the angels also to witness and then the angels tell allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about what that person has said and if there are words of patience of ridha then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also happy with that servant and allah makes the angels a witness to that approval that he is giving to his servant that servant should be granted good health his blood should be replaced with better blood hmm? whatever is ailing whatever is sick in his body should be replaced with what is better likewise when a person he loses his child when a person loses a child then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the angel of death that you took my servant's child obviously the angels did it because allah told them but allah asks them as if in surprise you took my servant's child you took the apple of his eye like the happiness of his life you took that away from him and the angels say yes and allah says what did my servant say so if there are words of happiness of ridha then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says make for my servant a house in jannah and call it baitul hamd the house of praise because he praised me in his difficulty so now he will be given a house in jannah where he will be praised and he will forever praise and glorify allah so allah sends angels to us remember we're not alone he's watching us 
And then He sends His angels to keep an eye on us. What we're saying, what we're doing, how we are reacting, how we are behaving. لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٍ Constantly, we're never alone. And these angels, remember there are different kinds. Some come during the day and the night. And there's a hadith that tells us very clearly about this. The Prophet ﷺ said, Angels take turns around you. Some at night and some by day. And all of them assemble together at the time of Fajr and Asr prayers. Then those who have stayed with you through the night, they ascend to Allah who asks them. And He knows the answer better than they. But He asks them, How did you leave my servants? Meaning, what were they doing? And the angels reply, As we found them praying, we left them praying. But this is for people who were praying, Fajr and Asr. For people who were sleeping, then the angels probably say that we left them as we found them, sleeping and lazing around and wasting their life. Lahu mu'aqibat. We're never alone. Min bayni yadayhi wa min khalfihi yahfadunahu min amrillah. And remember the meaning of hifz. The angels guard, protect. What? Our deeds, our words, our reactions. And also, they guard us, meaning from dangers. In a hadith we learn, not a hadith, a statement of a scholar, Mujahid Tabiri, he said, there is no person who does not have an angel appointed to protect him. When? When he is asleep. And when he is awake. So there are the angels that are kiram and katibin. Okay? And there are the angels who are sent occasionally. And then there are also angels that are appointed to guard us when we're sleeping and when we are awake. From who? From the evil of the jinn and other people and savage beasts. None of these come to him, but the angel tells it, keep away. Keep away. So for example, a person is standing and all of a sudden somebody throws a ball, okay, right on their face and this person is wearing glasses. But what happens? That ball, instead of hitting the glasses, what does it hit? The side of the head or just whizzes by. Literally just, you know, scrapes their side or something. Has it ever happened? Something like this, can you think of it? it happens all the time. But you just miss it. You just miss it, literally with a millimeter, a centimeter. Somebody is just about to hit you from the back. It's like, you know, when two cars are about to collide. So what happens if some harm is not decreed for a servant and that angel protects the person and tells that harmful object, keep away, keep away. You cannot hurt him. But if some harm is decreed for the servant, then what happens? The angel just steps away. And that harm, it befalls the servant. It's like once Ali radiallahu anhu, he was told by someone that some people are planning to kill you. Some people are planning to kill you. They're going to harm you. So do something to protect yourself. Ali radiallahu anhu said very confidently, with every man there are angels guarding him from whatever has not been decreed for him. When the decree comes, they move away from him and let it reach him. So, in other words, if these people are meant to kill me, it's going to happen. And if they're not meant to kill me, then the angels are going to guard me and they're going to protect me. Your fixed lifespan decreed by Allah is a protection for you. Hmm? So the angels, they guard and they protect from danger, from harm. When a person, he goes to bed, but before he goes to bed, he does wudu. Then you know what happens? An angel spends the night watching him, guarding him, protecting him from shaitan. And that angel is not standing by the door of your room or standing by the side of your head, in your bed, making sure that nothing hurts you. It's like you are surrounded and covered and protected all over, from the side of your head and your feet and your right and your left, all over. I mean, think about it. At night time, what kind of scary things come out of the earth? Creepy crawlies. I mean, there's bugs and there's spiders and there's ants. So many things. We have a small pool for the kids in the yard and yesterday, day before yesterday, I forgot to cover it. So yesterday when I got home, I saw there was a dead mouse inside it. Dead mouse inside it. 
And just the thought of a dead mouse being in that water was difficult to bear. But I was like, where was this mouse before? It came during the night. Couldn't have come during the day. It came during the night. Now just imagine if these things, they were hurting us from everywhere, from above, from below, from our right, from our left. Life would be very, very difficult. I mean, our bodies are so delicate if you think about it. Something, if an ant goes inside your ear, can you imagine? Can you imagine if a fly goes inside your ear, a mosquito goes up your nose? I mean, Allah is protecting you all the time through these angels. And yes, there are times when we are hurt. Why? Because that protection is not there. Why is that protection not there? Maybe we didn't seek Allah's protection. We didn't say, Bismillah alladhi la yadhuru ma'asmihi shayun fil ardi wa la fil samai wa huwa samir al hmm? Or, it was meant for us, that harm as a test. So, yahfadunahu min amrillah. Allah says, inna Allah, indeed Allah, la yughayyiru, he does not change. Ma biqawmin, what is with a people? Hatta until yughayyiru, they change ma bi anfusihim, what is with themselves. The state of a people is not changed by Allah until people themselves strive to make a change. If a person is not willing to change himself, to improve himself, to improve his condition, then a miracle will not happen. Things will not change just like that. What happens is that we just rely on the angels or we rely on du'as, thinking that don't do anything, Allah's angels are there, they'll protect you, do nothing. No, you rely on these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you, but you also have to do something yourself. Otherwise your situation cannot change. In Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin. And this is Allah's law. This is his law. A person has to fix his faults himself and then Allah will help him also. A person has to take responsibility to improve, to make something better. He has to be committed to bring a change and then Allah's help will also come. What happens is that we depend a lot on others for change that needs to happen in our lives. So for example, we want to become more organized. And we think that to be more organized, we need to have you know, this particular app that we have to buy for $5. And we need to have all the space in our work area, a big desk, a big shelving unit, right? And then everything will be organized. But it, does it work? Just because you go to Ikea and buy a thousand dollars of this furniture to organize your things, does it mean that next day you'll be organized? No. You can be organized if you want to be even without any furniture. You can be. And if you will be disorganized even with furniture that costs thousands of dollars and systems that may be very complicated. Don't depend on external things for change. Take responsibility yourself. And when you will take responsibility, you will try to create a change, then what will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also guide you and show you the way. Because this is Allah's law. Nothing will change unless people themselves want to change. You know, for example, your health. If you want to improve your health, if you want to improve your you know, physical body in the sense that get into shape, then what is it that you need to do? What is it that you need to do? Go sign up at a gym and pay $50 every month? Is that what you need? To bring a change in your body? To have a healthier body? To have a more physically fit body? And every month when you see your bank statement, okay, $50 went to the gym, like, oh, at least, you know, it's helping my body, and you don't even go to the gym? Or you go and on your way back you have an ice cap with a muffin. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? It's not going to work because you're not committed to make a change. If you're committed to make a change, then you can make that change even without paying a dollar to a gym. By changing your eating habits, your sleeping habits, your lifestyle, you can work out in your basement. You can work out you know, in your backyard, inside your room. 
That's if you want to work out. If you want to make a change. Right? Likewise, if we want to, you know, increase in our finances and our money, we think only if I have a job that pays me $3,000 a month, $5,000 a month, then I can start saving. No. If you're serious about it, you can survive even with a little bit. And you will make do even with a little bit. You can save up even from that much. Because you want to make a change in your life. You have taken the responsibility yourself. And remember, this is Allah's law. Allah's law. This is something that you see in your physical life, in your worldly life, and also in your religious life. You know, we want to, let's say, improve in our Qur'an recitation. Hmm? Or we want to make sure that we are of the reciters of the Qur'an. How will that happen? Just by hiring a Qur'an teacher? And paying them a big chunk every month? No. You have to read. You just have to sit there with the Qur'an and read and read and read and read. There's no other way. You have to recite. And if you're not willing to make this change, then change, a miracle is not going to happen that one day you wake up and you have perfect tajweed because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with perfect tajweed in your mouth. It's not going to happen like that. You have to strive and Allah will help. You have to strive to make that ha, to make that ayn properly, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open those passageways for you also. Yes. And so sorry, she said to me, go from Alif. And uh, she all the time stopped me. And so, uh, one day I was literally thinking I'm going to quit. And she said, okay, you're going to go and record my lessons. She only gives 10 minutes, right? And uh, she so she goes, alhamdulillah, I like the strict teachers. Alhamdulillah. But what happens that if we are told to make these basic, basic changes, fix our alif and fix our ba and fix our kha, we're like, this is not happening. But the thing is that if you want to improve your tajweed, it doesn't begin with fancy tajweed rules. It begins with what? Basic makharij. Doesn't it? It begins from basic makharij. If you don't have those right, if you cannot make a change over there, improve over there, you cannot improve up there. Right? So, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ People have to take responsibility. They have to bring about a change. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate that change. He will improve their condition also. Now, if you think about it, many Muslims, we were suffering in so many ways. And we think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not being merciful to us. But the problem lies where? In ourselves. If we are not willing to change our ways, then how do we expect the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come? You have to strive for change. If you think about it, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca, I was reflecting the other day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to leave Mecca even in the fifth year. Right? In the seventh year. In the tenth year. But it didn't happen. In the thirteenth year. At a point when mushrikeen were ready to kill him. They were ready to kill him. Together they were ready to kill him. Then Allah told Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to leave Mecca. Then he was given permission. Why? Because until that point, the Prophet ﷺ was striving for change. Right? To better the situation over there. To deliver the message to the people in Mecca. And things had to be ready in Medina. Circumstances had to be ready over there for him to come. So the Prophets of Allah, they had to strive for change. And then Allah's help came. And we think we can just sit there and miracles will happen. Allah's angels will go and fight for us. It's like the Bani Israel when they were told, enter the city. What did they say? Ya Musa, we're sitting right here. You and your Lord go fight. We have the same kind of mentality. We have the same mentality. Do nothing. Tawakkal ala Allah. Allah will make everything happen. No, you have to do something yourself also. When you will take one step for change, Allah will allow you to Change. Allah will improve your condition. This ayah means something else also. Which is that Allah does not change the state of a people. What state? A good state. So for example, people are you know, enjoying Allah's blessings. Hmm? Good times. Health. Money. 
happiness. Everything's good. Everything's perfect. And then all of a sudden, happiness turns into misery, sadness. Good times turn into horrible times. Those blessings were taken away. Why? Why? Because the people changed. How did they change? In a bad way. In a wrong way. They became disobedient. They were obedient before. Now they became disobedient. They believed in Allah before. Now they were disbelievers. They were grateful before. Now they became ungrateful. So because of that, what happened? Their condition also changed from good to bad. So whenever we see that things were perfect, now what's going on? Why am I suffering so much? Why is there so much hardship all of a sudden in this area of my life? Remember something's going on. You did something. Reflect on yourself. You know, it's like a particular person in your family. Everything was good. Perfect relationship. Spouse, for example. Or siblings, for example. Parents, for example. And all of a sudden, you realize you're fighting with them every day. Instead of loving them, you hate them more. What happened? Check yourself. Are you giving them their haq? Check yourself. Are you giving them their haq? How are you talking to them? How is your behavior with them? How appreciative are you of them? Are you criticizing them more? Or are you appreciating them more? Because of the change in your attitude, your relationship also deteriorated. So it works both ways. You understand this part of the ayah now? Hmm? That when our situation changes, it's because we did something wrong. Or our situation cannot improve unless... We create a change. We make a change. Hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. You have to take responsibility. Sometimes we learn things and we work in the way of Allah by seeking knowledge, but we skip the like character part of change. Like we'll change our physical appearance and then we'll go on to teach others about whatever we've learned, but we'll like skip the part that matters most. Like our akhlaq, our actions, our behavior towards others. That we don't change. And we wonder, why are people not supporting me in my hijab? Why are people not supporting me in my Qur'an studies? Because reflect on your behavior. Before you were obedient and now you're rebellious. Before you would comply and now you've become very rude. So, حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُوا مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Take responsibility of your actions. And then you will see a good change happen in your life. وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ سُوءًا And when Allah intends evil for a people, meaning if Allah decides that something bad should happen to a person, to a nation, فَلَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ Then there is no repelling it. No one can repel it. If Allah decides that something harmful, something dangerous, something that is very hard should happen to a people, no one can change that decision of Allah. Allah's decision is final. No one can protect from Allah's decree. وَمَا لَهُمْ And they do not have مِن دُونِهِ besides in مِن وَالٍ Any wal, any patron, any protector. Walin, wow لَمْ يَا Walin is one who guards, protects, defends, one who is a friend. So in other words, if Allah decides something evil for people, there's no escape. There's no escape. Where can they go? Who can they run to? There's no escape from Allah but to Allah. Always. So no matter what mistake has happened, no matter what wrong has been committed, what's the solution? Going back to Allah. Because there's no escape from Him. So on the one hand, strive. And on the other hand, seek His help also. هُوَ الَّذِي يُرِيكُمْ He is the one who shows you al-barqa, the lightning. خَوْفًا Causing fear. وَالطَّمَعًا And hope. He shows you lightning. Barq. What is barq? The lightning that you see in the sky, you know, when there is a storm, when there is heavy rain. Hmm? And this lightning is with what? Is it just light in the sky? Or is there something else with it? Hmm? Okay, thunder, noise, a blast, either before it or after it or, you know, around the same time, 
right? So when you see that flash of lightning and you hear that blast, both of these feelings come in your heart. Khawf and Tama. Khawf, fear of what? Fear of what? Being struck by that lightning. It's scary. It's frightening to hear that sound, to see that lightning bolt falling to the ground, or to see that flash. It's scary. And at the same time, there's Tama. What's that hope? Rain. Allah's mercy. Right? So both feelings come at the same time. Khawfan wa tamaan. Wa yunshi'u. And he causes to rise. Noon sheen hamza. To produce. To cause to rise. He produces. He raises. He causes to rise. As-sahab. The clouds that are athiqal. Heavy ones. Plural of thaqil. Weighty. Heavy. Meaning rain bearing clouds. So what do we see here? That in the middle of the darkness. Or when there is a storm then even in that darkness, even in that storm, there is hope. Yes, you are afraid. It's scary to go through those difficult circumstances in your life, those difficult times in your life. It's very scary. So many things can go wrong. You can suffer in so many ways. But at the same time, there is hope. Hope for change. Hope that this will result in something good. So no matter how Difficult a situation is, what's the lesson we learn from here? Be hopeful. Have fear of Allah, but at the same time be hopeful also. It's like, you know, when you hear that thunder, when you see that lightning, it scares you that, you know, what if it's Allah's punishment? But at the same time, the rain reminds you that this is also Allah's mercy. So you should always remain between fear and hope. Don't become so fearful that that fear overcomes you. And don't become so hopeful that you become carefree. No, remain between fear and hope. And yunchi sahab al such heavy rain clouds, how they're moving. If you think about it, the heavy snow that falls and the heavy rain that falls, so much water, where is it coming from? Of the sky? Have you ever had to carry a case of water bottles? Hmm? A case of water bottles? How is it? It's heavy. Really heavy. Now imagine that's just, you know, a little bit of water that falls from the sky. And where is that water coming from? Those heavy, heavy clouds. Yunchi sahaba al Nothing is too difficult for Allah. Nothing is difficult for Allah. Something might seem like a huge burden, a huge challenge for you. But for Allah, it's easy. So be hopeful. No matter how difficult a situation is. وَيُسَبِّحُ الرَّعْدُ بِحَمْدِهِ And the thunder glorifies Allah, praises Allah, بِحَمْدِهِ with His hand. يُسَبِّحُ دَسْ تَسْبِيحِ What? الرَّعْد. What is الرَّعْد? Thunder. The sound of thunder. You know when there's a storm, there's lightning, and there's also loud blasts? That is thunder. So this thunder that we hear, what is it? What do we learn from this part of the ayah? Is it just noise? Is it just a blast? It's actually tasbih. يُسَبِّحُ الرَّعْدُ بِحَمْدِهِ And when that thunder happens, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ خِيفَتِهِ The angels also do Allah's tasbih out of His fear. They also do tasbih at that time. In a hadith we learn, and this is a hadith that is recorded in the book As-Silsilatul Sahihah, which is a collection of different authentic hadith that Sheikh Al-Bani compiled together. So in this hadith we learned that once the Jews, they asked the Prophet ﷺ, what is thunder? Meaning when there's thunder, what is it? Why does it happen? What's that sound? The Prophet ﷺ said, it is an angel from among the angels, responsible over the clouds. He drives the clouds wherever Allah wills. They asked, what is the noise that we hear? What's that noise that we hear? Okay, we understand that there are angels that are driving the clouds, but what's that noise? The noise of thunder. He said, it is the angel of the clouds striking the clouds when he drives them on until they go where they're ordered. Meaning, that sound of thunder is the sound of the tasbih. It is the sound of the tasbih, of the angels. 
especially the angel that is appointed over the clouds. Did you hear thunder recently? Hmm? Just a couple days ago. So much thunder, so much lightning. So that is a time of being hopeful and fearful. That is a time of glorifying Allah and praising Allah. Because the angels, what do they do? They do this tasbih min khifatihi. وَيُرْسِلُ And he sends الصَّوَاعِقْ The thunderbolts. Plural of sa'iqa. What are sawa'iq? Sa'iq a thunderbolt. A bolt of lightning that falls to the ground. You know, with a blast. فَيُصِيبُ بِهَا Then he afflicts it. مَنْ يَشَاءُ Whoever he wills. And it happens that a thunderbolt, literally it will come and strike a person. I remember somebody once told me there was a storm and they were standing at a bus stop. And imagine, there's lightning, there's thunder, and you're standing outside. She said she was standing at a bus stop. And she said, literally, a thunderbolt fell right in front of me. Right in front of her, it fell. She was just literally a few steps away from it. And sometimes it happens that that bolt of lightning actually falls on an individual, directly on the person. And it can have very severe Severe ramifications. Really, it can kill a person. Even if they survive, it can cause a lot of damage to their body and a lot of emotional and psychological problems also later. Because it's a very painful and traumatizing and frightening experience to be literally electrocuted. And sometimes the thunderbolt doesn't directly fall on a person. It falls somewhere else. It falls somewhere else. But what happens? What happens? It reaches the person, right? Through something else, through a telephone, through, you know, the ground even, right? So, he makes it to fall on whomsoever he wills. And it is possible that sometimes the people whom this lightning falls on, وَهُمْ يُجَادِلُونَ فِي اللَّهِ At that time, they are arguing about Allah. He doesn't even exist. Some are saying, they're doubting his existence. They're doubting His power. They're fighting about Allah, arguing about Him. And what happens? Allah proves it to them right there and then. You doubt my existence? Here. Have a taste of my power and might. وَهُمْ يُجَادِلُونَ فِي اللَّهِ وَهُوَ شَدِيدُ mihal, And He is severe in assault. Mihal. Mihal is from Mim Halam. Mahl. Mahl is severe retribution. To powerfully execute a plan against someone. To harm them. To punish them. To take revenge from them. So he is shadid al-mihal. Now this is very scary. That literally, you know, a flash, a bolt of lightning can fall on a person at any time. The chances are rare, but the chances are there. They're rare, but they're definitely there. And who knows? We might be the next person. So a person should never be in a state where he is Saying something that Allah does not approve of. Doing something that Allah does not approve of. Something can fall on you from above, can come to you from below, can come to you from your sides. And right there and then you can finish. Allah can punish us immediately in an instant. So never feel safe and secure. Never feel safe and secure. You know when there would be a storm approaching, the Prophet ﷺ would become worried he would become worried that maybe, maybe this will be a storm that will finish the people. Because he realized the sins and the mistakes that people make all the time, that we make all the time. But we sin and we forget. And we think, oh, nothing's going to happen. No, something can certainly happen. وَهُوَ شَدِيدُ mihal. He is severe in retribution. We learned that Amr bin Abdullah bin Zubayr When he would hear thunder, he would stop talking. He would stop talking. He would become afraid and he would just stop talking. And he would say, Subhanallah, يسبح الرعد بحمده والملائكة من خيفته. يسبح الرعد بحمده والملائكة من خيفته. Say it everybody. يسبح الرعد بحمده والملائكة من Khifati. It's basically this ayah. But he would say subhanallah first and he would stop talking. Ya Allah, don't punish us. 
We are sinful, we are wrong, but please forgive us. So these are times when we should be afraid of Allah's punishment. يُسَبِّحُ الرَّعْدُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ خِيْفَتِهِ There was another video I was watching where a plane was struck by lightning. Can you imagine being on a plane when it's struck by lightning? Sitting in a car that is struck by lightning? Walking on a road that is struck by lightning and that road is all wet and you are wet and you also get electrocuted? Where can we feel safe? Where? And it can happen any time. And we know how quickly, you know, rain clouds can come and how quickly a storm can happen. People? People were actually killed in there. And I was just thinking how we had so many thunderstorms recently. And this once when we were going for Tarawi, we could actually see lightning in the sky and there was no rain. And it was, I guess it was both a miracle from Allah SWT to show us that, you know, Wherever he wants, it happens. Yes. Anywhere that he wants, disaster can happen. Lightning can fall. So never should a person feel secure from Allah's punishment, from his revenge. Never should a person feel confident and bold in sinning, in disobeying, in doubting Allah's power, his promises. Never. I was studying a few months ago in physics that it's possible, so lightning usually comes from the sky to the ground, but if the ground becomes charged enough with particles, lightning actually goes the other way around, where it goes from the ground straight up to the sky. So then what happens if there's people or buildings? Okay, so it can come down from above and also go up from below. It can go both ways, depending on the charge. So, yeah, from above and also from below. And this is why a person should never feel secure that just because I am under some shelter, I'll be safe. Or just because the ground is dry beneath me, I'll be safe. No, anything can happen from anywhere. We are very, very weak. It was said a history teacher was hit by lightning indirectly. And she went blind in one eye. Um, In one ear, she went deaf. She had a brain damage. She lost eight years of memory loss, and she forgot her daughters, and she didn't know any of her children. She didn't. So, subhanAllah, she had all this knowledge. She went to university, she was a teacher, and she forgot everything. It can cause a lot of harm. Memory loss is something quite common. Yes. We were in class, and there was one class on this side, one class on this side, and there was a door in between. And then all of a sudden, all the students from the other class was rushing, like, Opened the door, rushing into our class, and uh, and then there was big yelling and screaming, and uh, because there was a big uh, thunderstorm coming, uh, like it hit their side of the class, and then there was one student that was uh, uh, went home, and then it changed from that side to our side, and then we we all started moving to other side, and one side of the wall, it wasn't the big, but it was all down. And we were all like just rushing, trapping in the middle. Where to go. So, when Allah makes us see these things and hear these things, this is a time of really you know, seeking His protection and begging for forgiveness from Him and glorifying Him and praising Him so that he would save us and He would forgive us our sins. Because really, we are sinful. And if He punished us in any of these ways, He has all the right to do that. He has all the right to do that. To seek His forgiveness morning, evening, His protection morning, evening.